today we're going to be talking about this, the British Army 1944 pattern belt. Um, the design uh, follows one basically that had been introduced by Mills uh, many years previously of a three-part belt. So it's a belt um, in three segments an adjustment is um, affected by moving the outer segments up and down, the outer sections up and down the back piece of the belt. Um, we're going to have a look at these in more detail now, some variants of these on, on the floor, on a, on a blanket, and just talk about the development of this and uh, how it differed from, from previous and subsequent equipment. The first thing I thought we'd take a look at is the three parts of the 1944 pattern belt separated from one another, because it, one of the distinctive features of the 1944 pattern is the fact that it is a three-part belt. Uh, and you can see at the top here uh, the left-hand piece, uh, which obviously features the eyelets down the bottom for attaching equipment with hanger hooks. And then you have the extra suspension point here, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. Then we have the back piece in the middle here. And of course, size is adjusted uh, by attaching the, the side pieces uh, to the back piece using the C-hooks, which hook around the belt into pockets on the back. And you adjust the size by moving the two sides up and down along the back piece. And the right hand, uh, the right hand um, section of the belt can be seen here. Again, the extra suspension point there. And the only way it differs, other than being a mirror image and obviously having the other section of the belt buckle uh, there, the only way it differs otherwise is having it this loop here, which is to secure the small of the stock of the rifle, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. Here you can see the inside face of the three parts of the belt, and you can see the little pockets, which obviously secure the C-hooks around the back, whether you're attaching equipment or attaching the belt. Uh, sections together um, they obviously stop uh, any, anything slipping around when it's attached to the belt in a uh, very common uh, part of uh, Mills equipment design there. Uh, little belt loops here little, or little loops rather that secure the back piece of the belt uh, when it's adjusted up so that it doesn't flap around inside and you can see the inside the attachment points for the extra points of support whereas the buckles of course on the back are stitched on the the outside uh, of the belt there. So just a, a look at the uh, the design with the belt disassembled just to show you all the features there. So the 1944 pattern belt is quite distinctive in being a three-part belt uh, made of, up of three pieces but this wasn't something uh, that was unique to this design. The Mills Equipment Company had previously used this design on several sets of equipment and one example of that is the 1919 pattern naval equipment the belt of which can be seen here. I'll just hook that together uh, so it's a little bit easier to handle. And you can see this is also made in three parts. It's basically made in exactly the same uh, style. Uh, you, the system for adjusting it is exactly the same. As you can see there, the hooks go around the edge. Uh, you don't have the double loops on the inside. You only have one set. So that's sort of an advance on the three-part design in the 1944 pattern uh, sense. But this design of, of adjusting belts um, pre-existed, as I say, this is part of the Naval 1919 pattern set. So just by way of contrast there, um, the, uh, the design mills went back to a previous design in terms of uh, that part of the 1944 pattern design. Although the 1944 pattern belt does draw on previous mills designs, uh, the equipment set as a whole uh, broke new ground in some uh, regards for British service. Obviously it's dyed green and this is uh, standard camouflage colour 19, SCC 19, and it's also rot proofed as well for use in the Far East. Um, it, the move, there's a move away from brass fittings. The fittings on the belt are made of uh, anodized or painted aluminium, and in this case it's painted. Uh, I believe the, both specifications were permitted. Um, so the, you can see there the buckle is this sort of brown painted colour, and some of that's been lost through use. Um, later on we'll, we'll have a look at an anod some anodized fittings on these as well. And uh, obviously that's a, a new uh, part of the design. Previous equipment had been in, in tan webbing and brass. Also, the introduction of the, the eyelets, which we already mentioned, was a new part of the design, which would allow both certain elements of the 1944 pattern equipment to be attached, and also American equipment as well, which was an intentional part of the design. But if we unhook this and turn it round now, there's another part of the design which makes this unique, and we don't need to see the whole belt to, to um, illustrate this point. You've got the two points, they've got the two usual points of support at the back, uh, much like the 1937 pattern, the pouches, which would be worn at the front, have buckles on them, which the braces buckle to at the front. And then at the back, you have these two buckles, which the back of the brace is attached to. But the 1944 pattern incorporated a new feature, which is six points of support for the belt when the pouches are worn. So once the pouches are on, you've got two buckles at the front, you've got the two buckles at the back, that's four. And then you have these two little C-clips at the side. And these allow an extra point of suspension from the braces to be attached. Now, these themselves aren't uh, a completely new design feature. And I have another three-part belt here, which I will bring into shot. And this is from the RAF officers 
uh, web set, Mills Web Equipment for RAF officers, uh, introduced in the 1920s. And you can see that the little C-hook there uh, is basically pinched from this design. Uh, in this case, it's in place of the back buckles. So it's basically in place of these buckles here. And the braces for this set differed from what people normally think of with 1937 pattern in that they had a, a webbing tip at, the, at one end and a buckle uh, with a loop of webbing at the other. So just to illustrate my point about the, nine, the RAF officer's equipment, you'd have a strap which would have this at one end, a flared section in the middle, like 1937 pattern, and then at the other end you'd have this, and, and at the front this would attach to a set of brace attachments. But in 1944 pattern, um, in the 1944 pattern design, you have uh, there it, these little clips form an additional point of support. They aren't in place of anything else. So if I bring the braces in here and lay these out, I'll try and get these laid out as neatly as possible. Those straps come in this direction, and those straps go in that direction. There we go. Get these laid out here. So you have the two straps at the back, uh, which go to the buckles, and then you have one strap going over there. And we can demonstrate on this side, you have this extra strap, and this has a buckle which allows the length to be adjusted, so you literally just adjust the strap like that. And it attaches to this extra point of support by being folded through the C-hook like that. And then you have an extra point of support for the belt, an adjustable point of support as well, with no extra tail dangling down underneath. Now, with the nineteen, uh, with the sorry, with the Mills officers' equipment, uh, the idea was you didn't have a tail hanging down, which made it a bit neater because you wouldn't be carrying things on the brace ends. With nineteen forty-four pattern, you will. So obviously, you still have the brace end here, and you'd have one at the front from the front strap coming down behind the ammunition pouch or basic pouch. Uh, so you have these two points of support, and then the third one in the middle, so three on each side, gives a bit of extra stability to the belt. Uh, and this is a new feature um, for uh, Mills equipment, uh, and I don't believe it would be repeated. So just an interesting little detail of the design there. Another interesting feature of having the three-part belt as part of the 1944 pattern design we'll look at now. I have it set up on the mannequin here just with brace attachments at the front to show, uh, obviously, the braces attached and everything. But I'll move this round now and you'll be able to see what makes this uh, particularly useful feature. So if we look at the side of the equipment here, you can see that this can actually be worn over the shoulders because of this extra point of support. You can wear this over the, the shoulders and fully supported without the back piece being attached at all. And this is actually mentioned in one of the manuals uh, as being a, a good feature where men are suffering from sores or in a position where the back uh, needs to be constricted as little as possible to prevent too much sweating. You can actually wear the haversack attached to the equipment like this without the back piece of the belt in place. Obviously pouches at the front, maybe water bottle carrier hung here, supported by this side strap, uh, and then the haversack on the back and, and clipped onto the, the pouches or brace attachments at the front in the normal manner. So just an interesting part again of having the three-part belt is you can actually wear the equipment with the back piece uh, completely removed. Not that there are any photographs to show this actually being done in the field, but it is mentioned as a feature of the design. As already stated, on the right-hand side of the belt, you have a loop here with a lift the dot fastener, as you can see there. This comes apart, and this is meant to be looped around the small of the butt of the rifle uh, when it's carried on the sling over the shoulder, and this obviously would then stop the rifle rocking around on your shoulder. and means you don't have to stabilise it by holding onto it. Um, not a commonly used feature, and you quite often see these removed, and we'll have a, a look at a belt in contrast a little bit later on that shows that. Um, but, as I say, uh, a, a, an interesting feature of the design and one that, I'd, again, I don't believe was repeated uh, after this design. Um, but uh, that was the intention of the little loop that you see on the side of the, uh, on the, side of the belt. So as we've talked about in previous videos, uh, a lot of second issue components were introduced for the 1944 pattern equipment, and we have here a second issue belt uh, in comparison to the first issue belt. And the only real difference with the design, there's no difference to the design at all really, uh, it's just manufactured in a heavier grade web uh, webbing material. And if we bring them up to the camera, that should be uh, visible. You can see that the, the weave of the webbing is coarser. Um, and if we put them side by side and bring them up to the camera, you might be able to see the belt is actually slightly thicker as well. Hopefully that'll show up okay in, in shot there. Uh, so that's the, the difference between the first and second issue belt. If I move these past the camera together, you'll be able to see there is no, otherwise no difference to the design at all. Um, it, is, it is the same design, just made in this heavier grade webbing. Um, so that's the second issue, uh, the second issue belt. Um, as I say, introduced around the mid-1960s, probably not really seen on issue until the late 1960s, 
given the, the lead time it takes for new stocks of equipment to end up being issued out. Uh, but that's the second issue belt, so a, a modification was made there. Here you can see the inside face of both belts, and on the second issue belt we can see the one there's one stamp in the centre here. The outer sections aren't individually stamped, as with the earlier first issue belt. And this is a size normal, as you can see, and it's made by MWNS in 1968. And the size normal is the regular size. There was also a size large. The belt was made in two sizes. Uh, at the very first, uh, the very first production runs, the size normal was was uh, referred to as size small, but this changed quite soon after production began to size normal and size large. So uh, that's the uh, a look at the different markings on these two belts. And the last belt we're going to look at today is this modified belt. It's not only had the uh, side loop removed for the rifle, as you can see there, that's been removed from here. It's also had the extra points of support removed as well, which makes it a much cleaner uh, belt and a lot easier to uh, run through trouser belt loops or to slide equipment onto uh, should you be wearing things low on the belt with no uh, support for the belt in the form of braces. So this is a 1961 dated belt. If I bring this up to the camera here, you might be able to see some of the outer stamps are a little clearer. Uh, let's see if this, we've got a clear date on one of these. There we go. 1961 but again you can see this is a 1961 belt uh, and it has all three parts of the belts marked all three are stamped up which suggests to me that the second issue were, were the ones which ended up just having one uh, stamp in the on the back section of the belt so as i say a standard uh, first issue type of belt uh, just has had the extra fittings removed um, for use presumably as a trouser belt or perhaps to carry thing on things on belt loops around the waist with no uh, braces supporting it. So that's just a, a way that these were modified and I just thought it'd be interesting to have a look at that in terms of how these were modified at some points during their service life. This also nicely shows the green anodized finish in contrast to the painted finish we looked at earlier. So that's an in-depth look at the design of the 1944 pattern belt. Uh, this is sort of an adjunct to the beginner's guide videos I've made for this equipment uh, which I highly recommend you watch if you're interested in this. I think you'll find them interesting. Well, I hope so anyway. Uh, but that's everything I wanted to cover in this video, looking at the belt specifically. Obviously, if you like this sort of content and you'd like to see more, then please do consider subscribing. And if you are subscribing or you're new, uh, you've already subscribed, make sure you've hit the little notification button. The little bell notifies you when I upload future videos. I also have a Facebook and an Instagram page, both of which are linked in the description. And they're good places to keep up with what's going on, on the channel. You often get uh, going on on the channel. You often get updates on there. You get sneak peeks and things like that. And Facebook is a good place to get in touch with me if you want to. Uh, the uh, messenger system on there is better than YouTube's own. So uh, that's basically it for this video. Uh, so until next time, bye for now.